Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Cozine. And I'm Tracy McCray. Intestinal obstruction is a blockage that keeps food or liquid from passing through your small or large intestine. While causes of intestinal obstruction may include Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, hernias, and colon cancer, the most common cause is fibrous bands of tissue known as adhesions that form in the abdomen after surgery. Without treatment, the blocked parts of the intestine can die, leading to serious problems. But with prompt medical care, intestinal obstruction can usually can often be successfully treated. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic Trauma and Critical Care Specialist, Dr. Erica Loomis. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Loomis. It's good to see you again. Thanks so much. Glad to be here. Adhesions do not sound good when they're inside your body. Not really, but it's a body's natural reaction. Just like if you got a cut on your arm or somewhere else, we form a scar. And that's how you form scar on the inside of your abdomen. It's adhesions. What kind of surgery causes this? Really any surgery. So anytime you have an operation, you're at risk of getting this type of scar tissue. Uh, If you, or we used to think maybe pelvic surgeries led more perhaps to um, adhesions, but... Really, any type of operation can put you at risk for adhesions, and some people are born with them. They're called congenital adhesions. They've never had an operation but have a fibrous band. So kids, adults, just as at high risk for adhesions, or like a surgery as a kid would put you at risk as an adult? So adults, for sure, more at risk um, than children. Um, Children, if they present with obstruction, usually have different causes. Um, An adult who's had an operation, clearly more at risk than somebody who's never had an operation. But... um, Other things can cause adhesions, as you mentioned in the opening, Crohn's disease. They may not have had surgery, but they have intra-abdominal inflammation, and your body responds to that by making scar tissue, same as diverticulitis or some of these other causes. So they've never had an operation, but they still get the scar tissue. And cancer? Is it the treatment for the cancer or the tumor itself? Can be. So people can get obstruction from the tumor itself. That can happen. Or you could be undergoing radiation therapy, and that can cause intra-abdominal scarring, inflammation, and adhesions as well. So what are the symptoms? How do you know if this is you? You'll know if you have an obstruction, right? <laughs> it's, uh, people usually come to the emergency department, so you're usually nauseous, you're vomiting, unable to make, keep anything down. It's beyond your usual stomach flu or something like this. Most people then can't have a bowel movement or they can't pass gas. They start to get very bloated. They usually have abdominal pain. There are symptoms that are significant. Most people come to the ER, like I say. And is it twisted or folded or what? It can be. So obstruction can be simple where it just, you know, a piece of the bowel is kind of crimped off. It could be a complete obstruction. So the bowel is completely closed or partial. So it's just narrowed. Or it could be that the bowel has twisted on itself or it's stuck, as you mentioned, I think in the open as well, like in a hernia. So it comes out and it gets stuck in this hernia um, and the things can't pass through. How do you diagnose all those different kinds of obstructions? So a lot is based on symptoms, right? So we kind of take what the patient presents with overall um, and gives us their history. We examine them. If you have a hernia, we usually can identify that on small on a physical exam. Um, and then it's a lot of imaging. So usually it's a CT scan. Sometimes we can tell a lot from a plain abdominal x-ray, but usually a CT scan is going to tell us exactly what the cause is. I was going to say, anybody listening who has had uh, vomiting and gas all of a sudden went, ah! I know. Yeah. <laughs> like I say, it's beyond your usual. So there's a lot of times people just get the stomach flu or they eat something mm-hmm. that disagrees with them. They, uh, they have nausea and vomiting too. This is beyond that. You've been nauseous and vomiting. It's been 24 hours. You can't keep anything down. You're not passing any gas. You're getting bloated and you're in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pain is one of the key things that I, I think try so to educate too. my patients about too is that sort it of out of hurts. proportion to yeah, it's just it, not what you would have with a GI The illness. stomach flu or yeah. something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So you said it could be that the um, the bowel is just smaller or the colon is just smaller. So that's the suit of partial Yep. So you can have partial obstruction where, you know, it could be just smaller. Sometimes you can just have times where the intestines just aren't moving well. Like people after surgery, often their GI tract's not moving all that well. They've had general anesthesia or maybe they've had an operation on their abdomen and things aren't actually obstructed. They're just slowed way down. So we treat that differently. That's mainly supportive measures. Sometimes people come in with a partial obstruction. So things are just smaller. Sometimes those people get better in the upfront, but then they need surgery down the road because that small area keeps causing them problems. 
I think the other thing for people to know is we treat small bowel obstruction different than large bowel. So small bowel we look at differently than colon or large bowel obstruction. We treat a lot of small bowel obstruction conservatively because most people will get better without surgery, like upwards of 80% won't need an operation. And the surgeries don't often, except in certain circumstances, provide them benefit down the road. It might fix right now, but you're going to get another obstruction down the road. Can you give us a quick rundown of what a conservative treatment might look like? Yeah. So like I say, you'd come perhaps through the emergency department or maybe be referred to the hospital by um, your primary care provider and you're admitted to the hospital. Um, You usually have a tube placed in your nose. It's by far the worst part of the management. (laughs) If you ask, I think any patient, Um, once we've made the diagnosis, after we've gotten the imaging and everything else, and um, we're confident on the diagnosis, we decide conservative management. And so we put a tube in your nose. Um, Once the tube is in, it's not as bad. It's taking all the contents out from your stomach. So most people feel better because the nausea, the vomiting, all of that will stop. But you do have this tube in your nose. We don't let you eat or drink anything until things get better. Um, And we watch you. We watch your exam. We watch your labs. And we give you IV fluids to support you. What we do here, if you have a small bowel obstruction that's not um, needing surgery in the immediate, is we actually give you a dose of contrast into that tube that we put in your nose. And we get an x-ray in about eight hours. And we look to see how far that contrast is making it. If it makes it into your colon within that eight hour window, we have a fair amount of confidence that your obstruction is going to resolve without surgery. We take the tube out of your nose and we feed you. About a good majority of the patients do fine. They eat and they go home. A select minority don't do well with that, and they actually go on to have surgery. So is the obstruction just kind of resolving itself? Is that what's happening? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's the bowel just has gotten into a position that has kinked it off. Sometimes you've eaten something that's actually plugged you, you know, plugged up your plumbing, if you will, Mm -hmm. too much fibrous uh, debris or something like this, Um, and simply just letting the, the pressure off, if you will, by letting your bowel rest, getting all that fluid out, allows the bowel to relax and then gets things moving again. What are some of the complications if an obstruction isn't treated appropriately? Yeah, so one is, you know, simple things can happen. If you're nauseous, vomiting, and not able to take anything in, you're going to get dehydrated. And that's probably the number one complication if somebody chose not to come to the hospital. The other big complication that none of us want to miss is... Uh, compromise to your intestines, meaning they lose their blood supply. So some of these obstructions are not your simple, straightforward, we can just treat you without surgery. Some come in and and if the symptoms are um, significant or you have certain findings we see on the physical exam or on your imaging, we give you surgery up front because there is a risk that the intestines can lose their blood supply if they've twisted, if they're stuck in a hernia, something like this. I can't imagine that no one would go in because the pain is so bad. It's usually pretty intense. Usually the pain is what brings most people in. So it's kind of interesting to think about that surgery can cause this and then you'd use a surgery to to fix it. Yeah, and we used to, you know, the thought always used to be the sun should never rise or set on a small bowel obstruction. We should always be operating. But we found a lot of these people can get better without surgery and the surgery causes more scar tissue down Mm -hmm. the line. So you can, it doesn't ultimately help in the future. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about treatment for intestinal obstruction with Mayo Clinic trauma and critical care specialist, Dr. Erica Loomis. Very interesting. Thanks again for joining us, Dr. Loomis. Thanks again.